guys and girls. It's Ken and Gina here from OK Portugal. Welcome to another episode of Portugal Farm Life. We're actually off the farm and in this episode we're not really going to be on the farm so it's not really a Portugal Farm Life episode as such but we're going to take you guys on a little adventure. So come along with us and let's have some fun. We just want to give a special thank you and shout out to Paolo and Angela who are currently living in Vancouver. Uh, they're originally from Portugal and they said that they've been watching our videos and that we've actually inspired them to come back to Portugal earlier than they originally planned. And uh, they very kindly offered to buy us lunch. Now they're not actually in the country um, but in their hometown uh, one of their good friends has a restaurant and uh, they've offered to buy us lunch at this restaurant. So we're just on our way there now. Uh, both of us are getting quite hungry. Yep. And, uh, and then after that, we are going to take you guys on a little adventure, so do stay tuned. You can see how different this looks to Castella Branco, where we are living. All of these walls on the side here aren't made from granite, and these rocks are not granite. This is all limestone. And this over here is the restaurant that we're going to be going to. It's called Restaurante Agrala. It's got pictures of like, um, like crows. And Agrala means a jackdaw. A jackdaw is a type of crow. Wow, and there's a very cute doggy here. <laughs> Hello, doggy. It's like a Cerro de Estrella mixed with a, like a poodle or something. Hello, doggy. <coughs> So the restaurant's Restaurante Agrala, and Agrala, as I said earlier, is a jackdaw, which is kind of like a type of crow. So we're at this restaurant now, and um, we've got ourselves some drinks, and we've got some bread, and uh, some bread and some soft cheese. It actually says here that this cheese comes from Cerro Santo Antonio, so that's pretty cool. And this beer that I'm drinking is called Zarli, and it's also, it's got like a crow on it. I'm going to take you up there to the machine and then you can have a look. And that's a picture of the beer. So cheers everyone. Uh, this is a cheers to uh, Paolo and Angela. Thank you so much. <laughs> Saude. Oh. So the food has arrived. Gina has bacalhá con natas, which is basically bacalhá with like a cream sauce. And uh, I've gone for a steak. I can't rem remember the exact name. Oh, and I have another beer coming. <laughs> Obrigado. <laughs> Muito obrigado. So yeah, so I've got a steak. We've got some lemon. We've got some batatas fritas. Oh, and it doesn't end there. We've got some rice with some black beans. We've got a, a lovely fresh salad. And Gina ordered another, another portion of batatas fritas. Yeah, I think it's, we've got too much food. Yeah. Give it a good guy. We will, we will. Awesome. This looks so good. And uh, we are going to dig in now and we'll see you in a bit. So I sometimes find it really difficult to eat in Portugal restaurants because a lot of it's red meat, different cuts of meat. And I'm not over keen on that. But I finally had Bacayo explain to me and the one that has no bones, you don't have to spend ages picking the bones out, is Bacayo com natas. Com natas. Yeah, and it was lovely. It's a bit like English fish pie, and it was really, really yummy. But this bit that I've saved here is so that I have enough room for chocolate mousse. <laughs> and my steak was absolutely amazing. I'm not just saying that. Honestly, uh, in the two years that I've been in Portugal, I would say that this is definitely in my top three steaks that I've had. The big difference here is that they actually use charcoal, and you can really taste like the smokiness and you can taste the charcoal on the meat itself. Because um, a lot of restaurants, they'll just pan fry something or they'll grill it, but it'll be with gas. Um, and the actual cut of meat itself was just, it was amazing. I'm really impressed. Yes, and it's from, uh, it's from the olive trees. So around that, this area, there's lots of olive trees. And so the charcoal or the carvao vegetal, which is the charcoal that they use, actually comes from the olive trees. So, Nuno, thank you so much for having us. Um, this has been an amazing restaurant to come to, and we will definitely come thank back. Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Paolo, 
and Angela for paying for lunch for us. That's very, very, very generous. And I, I don't know if uh, Nuno, if you have something you want to say to Paulo. Okay. Hi, Paulo. Come to Portugal and go lunch with Ken and me. And yeah. And our family. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. And thank you to invite the, the Ken for, for lunch here. Yeah. And to know the, the village and the caves. Yeah. Thank you, Paulo. Well, that's where we're going to go next. We're going to go and check out these caves. Thanks, Nuno. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> good man. Thank you. We're just leaving the restaurant now, which is behind us. And if I turn you around, these are the stairs that go to the grutas, which are the caves. This is going to be a good thigh workout. Uh, Gina, do you want to get into something a little bit more suitable for cave exploration? Yeah, just about to. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, that, that's better. Yeah, no, I like the outfit. It's good. Okay, so we're going underground. Goodbye, world. Wow. Oh, Gina, do you know what I didn't bring? Is the um, the torch, the light panel, yeah. I can't believe it. I actually have a light panel to go on my camera and I forgot to bring it. That's not good. Oh, wow. Can you get them, oh. <laughs> Muito obrigado. Okay. So you can see these incredible walls here. Oh wow. Look how high that goes. So we've just walked down these steps and now we're inside the main area of the caves. And the very first thing that you see here is this absolutely beautiful rock pool. It's so stunning. And if you look up in the top, we've got all of these um, stalactites and they're basically hanging and dripping water into the caves. Sorry, dripping water into this little lake here. It's beautiful. And they've put some lights and stuff here so you can see it all. So all of this is limestone. And we've got all sorts of different formations here. So this over here is a type of stalactite. Now, I've done a little bit of Googling before we got here so I could figure out what all of this stuff is. And basically a stalactite is what happens when you get water dripping out the top of these caves. Um, it drips and it drips and it drips and it leaves like calcium deposits behind. So every time the water drips, it grows a little bit longer, but it takes a long time. It's, it takes a, a thousand years to grow 10 centimeters or one centimeter every 100 years. Now there's different types of them. This one over here, I'm not actually sure what this one's called, but it almost looks like a curtain, or well, I think this is what they call a curtain stalactite, because it almost looks like curtains. And then you get the more sort of pointy ones that are your sort of regular stalactites. And then you get the ones that grow from the bottom and go upwards. So you can't really see them here. Now uh, let's see, so these little ones here that are sticking up out of the water. Now those are called stalag mites. The stalagmites grow from the bottom. And the way that you can remember that is in stalagmite it's got a G and G for ground and in stalactite it's got a T. T for top. So that's a good way of remembering all of that.
Now based on how long it takes for stalactites and stalagmites to grow, they estimate that these caves are around 50,000 years old. And in 50,000 years, a little bit of rain, a little bit of water, that's what it took for nature to carve these beautiful, beautiful spaces underneath the ground. I bought this special light panel, like an LED light panel to put on top of the camera. And guess where it is? It's in the boot of the car. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're gonna have to work in some low light here. So please bear with me. There's a really lovely walkway going the whole way through here and they've just lit it up perfectly so you can see into all like the little caverns and things and I just absolutely love these little rock pools look at these and this is called the palm tree lake and this over here is the palm tree and the guide was just telling me that this is uh, 25,000 years uh, at least the age of the palm tree and then the water in the background here this lake th this area is about 40,000 years old and he was just showing me a whole bunch of these um, stalactites, the ones that are coming off the ceiling. Now, unfortunately, when people first discovered the cave, they were breaking off pieces. And so you can see that there's quite a bit of damage on them. But nature always prevails, and you can see here it's starting to grow back again. But it's not a good idea to touch, to touch these and put your, you know, your salts from your fingers or the oils from your fingers on them because you actually disrupt the way that they grow. It's quite fascinating to look and to see all of this. So in here you can really see some different types of stalactites. This one over here is called drapery. So instead of coming down as a point, it makes like a long sort of curtain, like a drape. And they call it a drapery. And you can see here how some of the stalactites are joining up with the stalagmites coming from the bottom. And when they do that, that's called a column or a speleothem. So the tour guide was just telling me that this one over here in front, this really long one that you see, is 35,000 years old. And it's fed by that tiny little point at the top that just drips and drips and drips for 35,000 years. And that's how you get this. It's absolutely amazing. I really hope that this camera is doing it justice without the light panel. It must have been absolutely awesome when they discovered this cave and they probably just had like little lanterns or something, candlelight, torchlight, and walked inside here. It must have been quite the sight. So I don't know if you can make out all of these beautiful shining crystals happening on this, on this beautiful stalagmite here. And the tour guide was just explaining to me that the different colors on this one are from uh, like the brown color that you see is from the clay and the rocks and just above here where where it all comes and drips down I don't know if you saw that little drip and over tens of thousands of years this carries on dripping and forms these beautiful shapes and there's another one over here which he pointed out is very interesting where you see the stalactite is actually growing at an angle so it's coming down at an angle and then touching the top of this stalagmite. And that it's a unique thing and found in Portuguese caves. And over here we have a little bat. Can you see him dangling from the ceiling there? That's so cool. 
And up here on the roof of the cave, we've got a whole family. So you can see how high the ceiling is in some parts. And I was reading online that there's chimneys in areas where the air actually flows out and keeps the caves at a constant temperature of between 12 and 16 degrees Celsius. Is this the baby bat? It was born in the last Thursday, eight days ago. Aww. Aww. So baby. Aww. Sweet. Now that was pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, I'm an idiot and I left my, my video light in the car. And so I really hope that I managed to capture the caves well. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully they looked really good because in person it was magnificent seeing all of that. Um, there is actually another cave that was um, a couple of minutes down the road and that one's called the Alvarez Caves. And now those ones look really interesting because they've got um, like a visitable length of about 350 meters. Whereas I think this one was about 100 meters or so. Um, and it's about 40 meters wide and a height of up to 95 meters. So those Alvarez Caves look massive. Um, so if you're in the area, definitely check those ones out as well. Um, but now we're gonna take you somewhere else really interesting. We were gonna see the Alvarez Caves, but we're running out of time. The sun goes down in about an hour and we want to quickly take you somewhere to see something very cool. So stay tuned. So we're in the Serra de Air. I've probably pronounced it wrong. It's, I think it's Serra de Air or, Air or something like that, which is a mountain range and there's a national park. And um, we are basically going somewhere where they've got some dinosaur footprints. And apparently it's the longest dinosaur footprint track in the world. I wanted to just do a little bit about access for the caves we've been to and for here at the Dinosaur Park. Both of them unfortunately don't have any wheelchair access. The caves had lots of steps to get down into and this place has steps and it's quite loose gravel all the way along. So unfortunately if you're in a wheelchair you're not going to be able to access these two places. And I think this dinosaur walk is about two kilometres to get to the prince and two kilometers back so that's four kilometers hopefully we've got enough time because the sun goes dark. down quite soon <laughs> let's hope so yeah i mean the sun is literally In going down just behind the, this hill look at this and once it gets past that and peak we've got to walk down here. and we've only just started and we've got to walk all the way around and around this gigantic space So in 1994, a couple of guys were working in this quarry, which is what this area is now, and uh, they basically discovered these dinosaur footprints, and now it's been turned into like a national monument, and there's actually several hundred of these footprints that cover an area of 30,000 square meters, so it's a three hectare you know, piece of ground that's covered in a whole bunch of dinosaur footprints. So they have a little information thing here on the dinosaurs um, but the ones that we're looking at today are called sauropods and as you can see here they've got a tiny head a long tail and they've got legs that are similar to elephants legs and on the the back feet and on the front feet where the thumb part is they've got like a long nail now these guys were about 30 meters long and weighed about 70 tons so these are some big dinosaurs so normally we wouldn't be rushing something like this. You uh, can see the sun is nearly, nearly going down and I feel like we're at the very beginning. Now there are all sorts of different viewpoints here where you can stand and you can look back over this huge quarried out area here. But uh, we don't actually have the time for that right now. We want to get straight to the dinosaur footprints so we can show you those hopefully before the sun goes down. So I think if you are going to come and you're going to see all of these things you have to start earlier on in the day uh, basically we started just after lunch and uh, now the time is quarter to five now normally the like the sun would go down at uh, about half past five which would have given us enough time but unfortunately unfortunately uh, there's this little mountain in front of us and the sun is going to go down 45 minutes early but we are at the scene here of where all of these dinosaur footprints are. So come and check this out. Now over here we can start to see shapes of these footprints. And we can see them across here. And you can see how they go all the way down into this quarry area here. 
These are 175 million years old. Absolutely amazing. Now you can see there's different shapes. I was looking on Wikipedia. These really big ones are the back footprints. And then you get these more sort of crescent shaped ones. And these are the front footprints. And so they're kind of like elephant feet plodding along through the mud here. And 175 million years later, we are standing here and looking at them. I'm actually only about a meter away from this one. And I'd say from that side to that side, it's about 40, 45 centimeters. So absolutely enormous, you know, a 70 ton animal was cruising around in here 175 million years ago. So they've made this beautiful wooden decking here that you can basically walk around and not disturb any of the footprints. And from up here you can see again, they continue all the way through here. So this place has the longest um, sauropod track in the world. So it's the longest dinosaur track of these sauropod type dinosaurs. Uh, it stretches 147 meters and you can really clearly see them um, if you had come when the sun hadn't gone down. But unfortunately, the sun's gone down and I'm really struggling to get some good light so I can really show this place to like the best of my abilities. Um, but yeah, it's definitely well worth a visit. The restaurant, the caves and the sauropod tracks definitely are really cool to see. Um, but I suggest that you get there a little bit earlier on in the day. Perhaps you do like the dinosaur prints earlier on in the morning. Then you go and hit up the restaurant, have yourself something nice to eat. And then you'd have a little walk over to the caves and go and check those out. You being a T-Rex. <laughs> Your arms are too long. <laughs> <laughs> 